I'm going to I want to talk today about being true to yourself and true to the in, things that influence you and the things that excite you and mean something to you because I was raised in my early childhood in Catholic schools there was the Catholic sense of uh, of uh, an allegorical sense of religion and because in the allegory there's a mystery that may be there maybe not there for some but for as a, as a young child it was there but i i uh i had the usual run-ins with nuns and the nuns of that period that came over from ireland and were ninth in the family or whatever and and they didn't get the kind of closeness that they needed in their lives but for me when i'm talking about latin american art and being true to myself it always comes through me <coughs> excuse me and part of my an important part of my art is the allegory the allegorical what is beyond the beyond in the with 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 the in the hebrew mythology or cosmology it's the it's the ein sof hour the beyond the beyond and it's and it's thinking in terms of beyond the real what happens when you go beyond the real and it fits you if that reality fits you then it's harder to deal with realities that are just black and white and for me in art it's not black and white it's a combination of many influences many cultures especially in my case latin america and the influence of the spanish culture when i was in the 6th grade at robert louis stevenson school that was called in uh the uh i i had a teacher fred fredrick hobbs who was an artist and later had the san francisco art center and other things and was always uh and he introduced me to goya the work of goya and i was just fascinated with goya and goya made a lot of sense to me and that goya is in the tradition of the spanish manner that's ribera ribera not rivera but ribera the art the artist who painted a lot did a lot of his paintings in naples and uh and uh, part of my heritage is neapolitan and there's a tradition in that 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 allegorical thinking that is tied to uh, tied to a, a, almost like a jesuit cosmology uh a jesuit cosmology goes you the it goes beyond the obvious into another levels and i want the art to go into different levels i don't want people to look at my paintings and think of them just as one thing what the spanish manner did was they went <laughs> in goya's case he was dealing in the last years of his life when he went deaf he was dealing with the the craziness and the pain that Spain was going through in the beginnings of the 19th century and when my favorite paintings that's in the uh, Frick Museum the blacksmith shop it shows that more traditional spanish light uh, light on a dark background before goya ribera ribera was painting on black canvas he painted on the black canvas not a white canvas in his latter years when he was in naples so but goya also painted this sort of thing on a on a on a black ground and then painted into the dark it gives it a sense of mystery that you may not have in the and what's what we call the spanish mood 
you see it even in El Greco, the Greek, uh, earlier. A lot of what we see is in, in this kind of, this is Murillo, who was, had a big influence on colonial painting in Mexico, in the, in the what we would call colonial Rococo. The cosmology, for me, is an important part of the artwork and to understand the cosmology of where the Mayans, very complicated, and that they, they came up with the same calendar we did except for two days. When we're looking at the, the Spanish Miranda and this kind of Baroque, this is in the, the Baroque period, moving moving into a different composition and the dark and the light the dark and the light the two the the, the two uh, compositional devices and then the dark in the lower part of the fi upper figure but it's the dark and the light that is and it's the study for the assumption of the virgin okay if you're a little kid and you're told uh, uh, yeah about the virgin birth, you don't really quite get it when you're seven or six years old. But when you're but, but when you're ten or eleven years old, it sounds pretty crazy. But also, there's an allegory to it. I believe that in my work, it's it's strongest when I do a even if I'm doing a portrait of somebody that there's a story behind the face. The face tells the story more than any anything else. And when we look at portraits, here's Goya portrait of himself, it's an etching. When he was the when he was the uh, court painter for the King of Spain, who was a relative of Napoleon's, was he was a real idiot. Anyway, but Goya always had fun poking fun at them. That's the satirical side. When you're in, if the if the satire is an allegory, it gives it a richness, a depth, and that's that depth that I want to see in the in the work. It doesn't matter. I don't care if you work in realism or abstraction. I want to see a depth, and a depth that's true to yourself. If you're not if you're not a person familiar or as, as in your childhood and later with with allegorical thinking. It is the thinking that you have that's you. And be true to that thinking. Don't try to be who you're not. Your artwork is you. Your artwork has to come from you. It can't come from any other place and be real. Goya, when he was doing, when he was court painter, he could have fun poking fun at the at the uh, at the king's family but when it came when it came to that horrible brutalness of this in Spain and Spain has a very violent history Goya came through when he went deaf all of a sudden what the Mexicans call the alabrijas the things that come in the night all this became part of his art and became him describing in lithographs and in etchings and engravings. He, 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 he saw the whole mess. And it was in this period that Mexico gained its independence from Spain. In this, in this lithograph by Goya, a lithograph is done on Bavarian limestone and uh, was a relatively new medium to the uh, 
early 19th century. And Goya started using it more and more in his last years. And he was seeing these people mangled by the horrors of the war, but also people who were poor and abused. And, and, and because he was so used to painting royalty, this absolutely grabbed him as something the opposite, but with, with a nobility. And I think this kind of this kind of work has a nobility and an open space to it that gives it an existential feeling. Here we can see the composition in his latter years, the dark and the light and the big, big spaces in the back. And that's what he felt was the horrors of Spain or the horrors of war. And he, he, he talked about the horrors of the whole daily living in Spain at the time. In his latter years, he went to Burgundy, France, got out of there. It just, Uh, ink drawing with the dunce. What we call, what we think of as the of the Ku Klux Klan, those pointed hats came from the, the came from the Spanish. And if there's a wonderful, most most the best documentary film I ever saw was to die in Madrid, the Spanish Civil War, in the in the 1930s in Spain, the the nationalists against the republic, the republic being the uh, the, the more liberal left, the nationalists being Franco in that. <sighs> Looks very abstract. <sighs> it's all part of the horrors. In Ribera, the softer, what today we would think of a Conte chalk, a soft, uh, and uh, in that study, that that insisting on detail, but at the same time, there's an allegory. So it's taking the allegory into the realism instead of the realism into allegory. Because if you take your realism into allegory, you may miss the middle step. In the middle step, it gives you a different space, a different space happening in this. Even though it's a study, it's a study of the bat and human ears. What is a bat and human ears? You'd have to ask Rivera. The sepia tones, very common in those days, but not 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 so uh, soft, and not so not any not use of uh, of of cross hatching, but rather a soft chiaroscuro, the art of going from light to dark. The chiaroscuro, important in Spanish painting, that it goes light to dark. And in the contrast is important. My my collection of masks from all over the world talk about, and we've talked about this before, but it's it's that it's the face. It's the face that tells the story of what what the culture is about and the spirit of the culture and the spirit of the person. The spirit of the person may be in the portrait or in the mask. To, to believe in to believe in a thinking that goes beyond realism but it's not surrealism surrealism is an intellectually too much, is a too much intellectualizing 
You must let it come through you and be you and not be something that you, that you aren't. <laughs>